All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, we are seeing those numbers tick up. So we're just going to give it a couple more minutes. Um, we appreciate your patience. I know we ran a couple of minutes behind. We've, we've gotten, you know, rusty with the Zoom. And so if you can believe it, which I think is a positive sign um, of where we're all at. So um, my name is Josepha Blocker. I am the acting principal um, in for Tammy Strauss while she's out on maternity leave. Um, in a typical school year, I would be the Cutler House Dean and um, am um, very grateful to Ted Delacondro who is filling in for me um, in that capacity while I am doing this. Um, and I am watching those numbers get a little bit more consistent, um, which is great. So I think we are ready to go. Um, we have been so thrilled to meet your ninth graders um, this week. They have um, come into us as a um, spirited, but respectful, um, enthused group of kids. Um, it has been lovely as, as the deans have been doing assemblies and as we've been sort of guiding them through the various orientation activities to see them embrace high school and what we are all hoping for it, um, to be a more structurally normal year here. And so um, we wanted to let you know that we have thoroughly enjoyed them. We are grateful that you have sent them our way and we have a lot of um, great information for you this evening. Um, before we get going with all of that, I wanted to introduce you to Jason Williams, our vice principal, um, and to just give him um, a few moments to say hello as well. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Jason Williams, I'm the vice principal here and um, I am really more or less the one who sends all the emails and also um, generally helps out with uh, a lot of communication and uh, other things in the building. So it is great to see all of you and um, we look forward to talking to you tonight. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Will Adams who is one of the co-presidents of our PTSO. Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, th thank you, Jason, thank you, Josefa. So let me just, I'll quickly introduce myself again. I'm Will Adams. I'm co-president with Michelle Wetlaffer um, of our PTSO. Uh, so far, we are off to a great start. Uh, and for anyone who I've already met or seen at our meet and greets over the last couple of weeks, thank you again for coming. They were fantastic. We shared a lot of great information. Uh, I'm going to post a link uh, in a second. I apologize. I'm trying to do links and talk at the same time, but we have a, um, an FAQ page that we compiled from all of our parent meet and greets that uh, has some, you know, some great answers and information to a lot of the, the questions that we heard and, and came up. So I think if Michelle and I were to describe the most important part of our work um, with the PTSO, it's communication. Um, and you can't say it enough, communication, communication. So the most important thing that you all as members of the PTSO can do is make sure that you're signed up for our weekly information newsletters. Um, and if you're not getting our newsletters, you can go to uh, the front page of our website uh, and you'll see down the right side, uh, a little form you can fill out to start receiving those new newsletters, excuse me. And I will put that Newton South link uh, in the chat. Um, so in those weekly newsletters, you're, you'll find out all sorts of stuff we did in the previous week and uh, events that are coming up. Um, you'll also see opportunities um, for, you know, sign up and be a volunteer. Um, we have more than a dozen volunteer committees. Uh, we welcome everybody's participation. There's all sorts of roles you can do from home, you can do at the school um, that might take a little bit of your time or, you know, is involved as you would like to be. We welcome everyone. Um, in areas like hospitality and holiday events, uh, we need parent class reps. We also would love someone who is a little bit techie and can help with website maintenance. Um, we pay for all of our activities mainly through our dues campaign. And this year, our goal is $66,000. We are a, a little over a third of the way there. So we are hoping to get 100% participation if we can um, at any level that's comfortable for members of our community. And you know, in, with your support, um, we help fund teacher and student activities. Um, you know, some of the things that we spent our money on, $26,000 was distributed among all of the departments to help pay for school supplies and individual events going on in those different departments. 
uh, $15,000 for our teacher and faculty appreciation breakfast and lunches, which are always a huge hit. They're fun to volunteer for. Um, and they always go over very well with the staff uh, at the school. Uh, $17,000 for South Fest, which I think you'll hear a little bit more about from our boosters. We're coming on shortly. $4,500 towards our directory um, and communications and about $2,500 for administrative and, and legal expenses. Um, to pay your dues, I will uh, send a donate link right now into the chat. Um, Make sure I can get that in. You can click on that link and it'll take you to our dues page. Um, you know, everybody, it, you'll see that it helps pay for our directories, both online and in printed form. Um, but everyone will have access the, to the directory. It is a way for us to, um, you know, tease the community to get online and to help contribute towards the dues, but also it's a way for you to sign up and get all your information in the directory and make sure we know who you are and where you are and all that good stuff. Um, I think that's about it. As I mentioned, I will put a link right now into the chat um, for our FAQ page. So for any, you know, hopefully we'll catch any uh, questions that you might have forgot to ask. Um, to Jason and, and everyone else that's here and Josefa. Um, but other than that, thank you for your time. I'll post those links and I'll hand it off. I'm not sure who's going next. I think it's me, Will. Ah, uh, Terry, <laughs> Terry Ginsburg. <laughs> Hi, I'm Terry Ginsburg and I, I feel like I'm reporting live from the uh, girls soccer game over at Cambridge Ringe in Latin, uh, where the game is running uh, about an hour later than it uh, was supposed to. So here I still am. But uh, welcome, everybody. Um, we're psyched to get to know you. And um, I am co-president of the Booster Club. And uh, that's the, uh, the group that is uh, kind of a sister organization to PTSO. Um, but we are dedicated to sports and we're like a PTSO for sports um, and, and to building school spirit across the school. So we do that through um, a number of different events, activities throughout the year, and we do a lot of fundraising to support the athletics department. Um, so because I am at the field, I'll be brief, but um, we, uh, we run a number, a couple of the events that we run include uh, Celebrate Self, which is coming up. So mark your calendars for the week of October 15th through the 22nd, where we'll do a number of fun activities through the year, uh, through that week, promoting a lot of the games that are happening and really bringing into the fold a lot of the other student groups, the clubs, the organizations, the fine arts, fine and performing arts, and that's all underway right now. And it, it'd be a really fun thing to get involved in if, if, um, if you're looking for something to jump right into. So um, the way that you can follow the boosters and get involved and find uh, spirit wear is um, through our newsletter and that you sign up for when you sign up for the boost for the PTSA PTSO newsletter you just click under email type you you click athletics you can also find us at nsboosters.org um, that's our website um, and then we also have an Instagram page as well at nsboosters so we also run the concession stand at um, all the football and all uh, games happening um, under the lights um, on stadium fields starting with tomorrow night um, so you can find us, you can buy spirit wear there and snacks for the game. Um, it's a lot of fun. Please come find us. It's called the Lion's Den, the bleachers where all uh, the South students sit. And it's just a lot of fun. It's also a great way to get involved and kind of get, get to be part of the action at South is to come and help us sell uh, concessions or spirit wear at the stand. Um, and then in the spring, um, we launched last year a Lions 5K, which is um, a uh, fun community road race. And we welcome everyone to do that with us again. It's our biggest fundraiser of the year and it's just a lot of fun. So we hope you'll get involved. Please follow us, like I said, on uh, the newsletter for volunteer opportunities and uh, hope to meet you um, all out there soon. Thank you. I'm not sure who I'm handing it over to. <laughs> I guess it's my turn. Uh, hi everybody, um, I'm Star Lu. I'm, I have several hats to wear. One is a Chinese teacher at Newton North. Um, two others include Jingshan Exchange Program. And the most important thing that I'm gonna talk about is the GALF, the Global Education Leadership Fund. And actually I do have another hat. I am a future or potential Newton South parent. My son is, uh, my older one is still in Brown right now, uh, two more years. So here I'm gonna share a screen and do a very quick, um, 
presentation and uh, to share with people what GALF means. So GALF stands for Global Education Leadership Fund. So let me go share screen here, there. So um, the GALF Fund has become a nonprofit organization. That means every donation now is tax deductible. And if people at any time have questions regarding GALF, you can email me at lewy. So GALF Fund provides funding for students um, who participate in international education experience or they are going on the global education, we can provide a need-based scholarship and we promote equitable access to trips. We fund pretty much every single trip run by both Newton North and Newton South. And we try to cultivate a community of global uh, awareness. Not only language exchanges are covered by GALF scholarship, we also fund service learning projects. For example, this past summer, New North had a Nigeria trip. Um, even though students did not need to apply for GALF fund, but we are still able to help them if they were, there were any needs. Um, we provide support for summer study programs, international music performances, international sports competitions. So here are a couple of pictures from the previous trips. And for New North, we funded all these trips before at Newton South, we, pr we provided funding for these trips before. This coming year, I'm gonna talk about a little bit about which trips are for sure running. At Newton South, um, for sure, Argentina trip is running and French trip, I'm not sure yet. I will keep people updated. And Latin trip, which is between Newton North and Newton South might be running this year as well. So any family who needs some scholarship or uh, financial needs um, for students to go on to inter international trips, please make sure to reach out to me or to apply for GALF Fund. And where do we find the information on NPS website? It's under department and programs. It's called international travel programs. And this is what the website looks like. And you can find GALF Fund scholarships on the side. And how do we get involved? We have, uh, currently we have eight board members, four from New South and four from New North. And uh, currently the four New South board members help us um, contribute to um, meeting. So we have one meeting per month over Zoom and we evaluate applications um, and we set goals for fundraising and help with fundraising events. That being said, please mark the calendar and save the date on Saturday, April 29th, 2023, well, next year, uh, we're going to have our annual gala. And this is a very fun event for our community to come together, celebrating our international exchange and do fundraising. Uh, you may also want to consider mentoring a golf scholarship recipient or help us connect with corporate donors and simply spread, spread the word. Follow us, please. I know people have a lot to follow this tonight <laughs> for the past three uh, presentations. So please feel free to email me at lewy and newton.k12.ma.us. And very exciting, we are starting the international trips. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Hi there. So, um, I'm gonna introduce Kimberly Borgita, uh, the head of special education. Hi there, I'm, I'm Kimberly Borgita. I'm the department head for special ed. And I just wanted to speak to you a little bit tonight about, you know, those of you who have students that are on IEPs and who you can contact and who your people are at Newton South, I would be one of them, of course. And then there's also Jody Whitten, who's the assistant department head for special ed. Um, we have Carrie Lynn Carnahan is our team specialist. So many of you may end up having meetings with her or you might be hearing from her. Um, she chairs meetings, a lot of evaluation meetings. Um, so if there's any testing that your child do for this year, you'll probably be in contact with Carrie Lynn. In our special ed office, we have two administrative assistants. So you often will hear from your meetings. Their names are Kathy and Lori. So Lori Callahan and Kathy Leone. And they're your two ladies that um, sort of manage everything that comes in and out of the special ed office and, and sets up meetings and connects you with the right person if you need to, to know where you're going. 
Um, and then each of you that um, have a student on an IEP, your student is signed a special ed liaison. Sometimes we call that person a case manager or it's their special ed teacher or inclusion facilitator, but they're all the same person. So whoever your student's liaison is, that is really your first line of defense. So if you have a question or concern or anything you wanna know um, that's going on with your child or you need you know, some support or somebody to help advocate for you and your, your student, then that's who you wanna reach out to. Um, I would also encourage you to reach out directly to general education teachers as well if you have questions about classes and things that are happening or tests or quizzes or any questions about assignments. Um, you know, they, they you wanna hear from you, they'll get back to you as well. Sometimes I, I recommend it's a good idea to go ahead and copy your special ed liaison on some of those emails so that they're also in the loop and know anything that's going on with your child and they can follow up like when your, your student comes back to their class with them. One other thing I wanted to talk to you about was the um, Newton Parent Advisory Committee. And um, for Newton South, we have our own CPAC or Special Education Parent Advisory Committee. Um, and our advisors for that are Kim Gallagher and Karina Simonian. I can, when I'm done talking here, I will put their emails in the chat if you're interested or you, you know, want to learn anything more about New, uh, Newton South CPAC, they, you can reach out to them and I'm sure they'd be happy to hear from you. Um, but I'm looking forward to having a really nice year with all of you. And again, you know, that liaison is your person, but always can reach out to me or Jody if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you. And I think that after the deans are going, right? So I don't know if a certain dean is going first. Okay, Mr. Banks. <laughs> All right, I guess I'm going first. Thank you very much. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Mark Banks. I am the Dean of Goldrick House. Very excited to be here. Um, <clears throat> quick introduction about me. It is my 11th year as Dean. I am also an English teacher, uh, or I guess I should say former English teacher. The deans don't teach anymore. Uh, and I'm really excited to work with uh, the Goldrick ninth graders this year, uh, and actually all of the Goldrick students, but any Goldrick ninth graders and new to South students. So with that being said, uh, I am going to introduce the Goldrick counselors. Um, so I will start with Chris Hardiman. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Hardiman. This is my 11th year at Newton South. And um, I love being a Goldrick counselor alongside Mark Banks and Christina Brown um, and Hey Choi. <laughs> Um, I'm going to just give you a little bit of uh, a, an answer to one question that we get from students. Um, that's what we'll be doing. Uh, the counselors will each be just giving you a, uh, an answer, a typical answer that we hear to the, uh, or a, an answer that we hear to a typical question that we get from ninth graders and new students. Um, so one of the questions we get very frequently is, um, what do I do if I want to join a club? Um, and I can tell you that one of my uh, other jobs, besides being a counselor, is the school uh, clubs and activities coordinator. So um, here we go. I can tell you that uh, every year we have between 50 and 100 clubs and activities that are available. There will be a list of clubs, um, a Google document on the Newton South webpage under student activities that will go live uh, with this year's offerings in probably in the next few days. Students can learn more about clubs and then sign up for them at upcoming club fairs. Uh, there will be a large club fair next Tuesday during line block. And then there will be many club fairs organized by category the following week. Um, and then if students are interested in starting their own club that doesn't already exist, uh, they can follow the instructions that I put out on our all school Schoology page. So they can refer to that. Um, and all this information that I shared is going to be on the um, All School Schoology page, or was on the All School Schoology page for the students. And I will also be posting it on the website. Um, and I will share information with the uh, PTSO as well. So um, that's all coming up in the next two weeks. And so uh, we really encourage students to get involved. Um, at South, there are many, many ways to get involved. And um, especially for new students who are trying to meet uh, new friends. Uh, it's a great, great way to get involved. So uh, with that, I'm going to pass it off to Christina Brown. 
Hello. Hi, my name is Christina Brown. Um, I have been a counselor at Newton South. This is my fifth year, although this is my first year working full time as a guidance counselor. So really excited about that. It's kind of like I'm starting with your um, your students as well. Um, one question we sometimes get, this happens throughout the course of high school, um, but from ninth grade and new to South students as well is, am I on track for college, career, um, anything after high school? And the answer right now is absolutely. So go to your classes, connect with people, join clubs, join sports, you know, go out of your comfort zone, but absolutely you're you're on track, you're in the right classes, as long as you know, you've know you talked to your guidance counselor and that's all set, but you're doing, you're doing just fine. So welcome. Oh, I, am I introducing uh, Ms. Choi? <laughs> Sounds good, yeah. <laughs> all right. Hello, my name is Hee Kyung Choi and I'm actually a counselor in both the Goldrick House and the Wheeler House. Um, and so um, I, I have that, um, the pleasure and the privilege of working with two houses, which is great. My office is located inside Wheeler House, however. And so your children who have me as their counselor will get to know two houses and the staff there um, pretty well. Um, one question that a lot of ninth graders have asked in the in this year and in the past is, um, if I don't have a class scheduled, is it free time for me? Um, so ninth graders at Newton South don't have any free blocks. They are supervised at, that supervised at all times. When a class, uh, when a teacher is absent and a class is canceled, uh, students usually go to a designated spot. Usually it's the student center, but it could be other places. And during lunch, it's the lecture hall. And there is a, a teacher and adult who will take attendance and supervise um, that um, canceled class. And then for blocks when they don't have classes, they would have a directed study schedule for them um, so that they would have to go to the directed study teacher who will take attendance. And if they need to use the library or go and see a teacher, they would get that directed studies, the teacher's permission to do so. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Dr. Martin in Wheeler House. Sorry, can I jump in? Sorry about oh, that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm actually going to introduce Dan Rubin, who is uh, the head of our guidance department, as well as a Goldrick guidance counselor. Great. Thank you, Dr. Banks. Um, hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Dan Rubin. Um, I am in my eighth year now at South, um, and I have students in both um, Goldrick and Goodwin House. And um, one of the questions that I hear a lot, and I am around during the summer months um, in my role as the director of guidance and there for registrations. Um, and I hear from students, I didn't go to Brown or Oak Hill last year. I'm new to Newton Public Schools. Um, and I'm really feeling like I'm wanting to meet other students and feel more connected. What can I do? And I wanna share that um, since the springtime, we have enrolled over 100 students across all four grades who did not attend a Newton Public School school last year. And nearly half of those students are in the ninth grade class. So there are many, many students who are in that same position of um, feeling new, worrying that they might be the only one who doesn't know a lot of people. Um, and one thing that I really encourage students to do is, um, as you'll hear over and over tonight, uh, getting involved. Um, making sure that they are communicating to some of the adults that are in their lives that they're establishing connections with, whether that's their guidance counselor, their advisor, a teacher or coach with whom they're developing a trusting relationship, um, but just to communicate how they're feeling um, and that we can talk to them about their interests, try to find ways to match them with activities and opportunities uh, to help them feel more connected and like they're becoming part of the South community. Thanks. And I, I actually, I think I'm gonna uh, introduce one more, a Goldrick House uh, alum who is not currently working as a school guidance counselor, uh, but who's one of our school adjustment counselors and is on the call with us tonight. And that's Nicole Motley. 
Hello, everyone. I'm so glad to have this time to talk with you a little bit and welcome you to a new year at South. Um, we're glad to have your children with us. Um, as Mr. Rubin said, um, I'm former Goldrick guidance counselor, but now full-time school adjustment counselor at South. Um, and I'd like to tell you just a little bit about um, a counseling center that we started last year and are uh, uh, working on um, continuing to develop this year. So there are four counselors, me, Sarah Style, Brian Daleski, and Kathleen Solage, who've been working on getting our counseling center up and running. And we will be doing probably starting in October stress less groups where we'll be working with groups of ninth and 10th graders and 11th and 12th graders, um, working specifically around managing and strategies to manage anxiety. And um, we'll be advertising this and also guidance counselors will be making referrals for the group. So that's something that you may be hearing about in the future. Um, Sarah Stiles also gonna start in a few weeks in a line and shine morning group, which is a drop-in group. It's just a few minutes before classes start where kids can come in and center and get focused for the day. So we're very excited for that to, to start up. And um, guidance counselors later on in the school year will be offering some time in the counseling center as well, where students can come in and chat and, um, you know, just talk about those things that are on their mind that the adults in the building can help them process. So all these are wonderful things that we are starting and working through uh, in the counseling center with more programming to come as we go along. So I just wanted to let you all know about that and we look forward to working with your kids. I'm not sure who's next. <laughs> hey, everybody. I think I'm next. Uh, I'm Megan Martin. I'm the Dean of Wheeler House. Uh, welcome to you and to your students. We're looking forward to working with you and uh, your students throughout the next four years of their high school experience. Um, this is my fourth year as a Dean at South, but I taught English from 2005 until the 2019-2020 school year. Uh, and it's my pleasure to introduce the guidance counselors in Wheeler House. You've already met um, Hey Choi, but I wanna introduce you to uh, Aaron Lewis and Shira Limmer. So I'm gonna hand this over to Aaron Lewis. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's just nice to be here. I can't really see you, but that's okay. Um, this is my 15th year at South. I also worked 14 years at Brown Middle School across the field. Um, so I've been around a little bit. Uh, wanted to talk about an important question um, that has been coming up recently and things have kind of shifted um, a little bit and, and probably in a good way in terms of getting organized and keeping organized, I love that question quite a bit. Um, a few years ago, South moved to uh, using G Suite because a lot of teachers have been using Google Forms, Google Docs, uh, the Google Calendar. So that's something that kids have been using uh, more and more recently. Uh, teachers also use Schoology. Uh, they post uh, assignments and grades there so kids can use Schoology. I know counselors use Schoology for various things and um, messages and, and ways to communicate. And also, I believe that every ninth grader this year is getting a traditional uh, planner notebook, um, uh, old school kind of uh, traditional notebook to help them uh, stay organized. And sometimes when kids write things down, it's easier to uh, remember things uh, um, physically. So there's a lot of different ways and counselors are always available to help kids or organization amongst other things. Um, and I think we're going over to Shira. Hi, I'm Shira Limmer. I'm going to apologize. I live near Fenway Park and Aerosmith just started playing, so I apologize if there's background noise. Um, I started at South last year, so I am still a bit new to South, but it is my second year and I feel very grateful to be part of this wonderful team and community. One of the questions I've been getting um, is what I do if I think I'm in the wrong level class. And we always encourage students to start with their teacher. A lot of times in the beginning of the school year, the teachers are reviewing with the students, so it might feel a little bit easier from what they're used to. Um, but the teacher knows the direction that the curriculum will be going, and they'll be better off to assess and keep their eye on the student to figure out whether a change in level does need to be made 
side, I know a lot of the department heads are looking to hold off on making those changes until we have more data for them. But obviously we want to work with you and your student and the teachers um, to make sure that your students are achieving um, at the right level, at a comfortable level and at a level that will bring them successes. And now, um, do I pick? <laughs> um, I will pass it off to Teddy. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Ted Delacandro. I am the acting dean for Cutler House. Um, I've been at Newton South for 21 years. Uh, the first 20 of those were uh, part of the as part of the special education department, which I will return to um, at the end of the term when Miss um, Blocker returns to her position as um, Dean of Cutler. So I look forward to working with everybody. Um, and it's my pleasure to introduce our guidance counselor. But I, I first want to mention that Donna Siegel, one of our guidance counselors, unfortunately was not able to make it. She sends her best and she says, you know, you can reach out to her if you have any questions. And she's always great about um, getting back to people. So um, I'd like to introduce James Medeiros, guidance counsel from Cutler. Hi, everyone. Good evening. It's nice to be here with you. My name is Jim Medeiros. It's my 16th year at Newton South. So as I was telling the ninth graders the other day, um, I was, I've been here since before they were born. So that's great for making me feel nice and old. So, um, so it's great to be here. Look forward to meeting you and working with you over the next four years. Um, some of the questions that uh, we hear from ninth graders typically um, is how do I set up a time to meet with you? When can I meet with you? And how do I reach you if I have a question or concern? So the best way for students to meet with us is to set up a time. Um, it, it's to, to meet with their guidance counselor is to um, contact us through the you know, their Newton Public School Gmail or through Schoology message. Either Schoology or Gmail is a perfectly good way to communicate with all of us. Um, when can they meet with us? Um, students typically meet with their counselors when they have a directed study on their schedule. Um, some students do not have a directed study. Um, in that case, they can meet with us during lion block on Tuesdays or during lunch blocks throughout the week. Sometimes counselors will meet with students before or after school. It is best practice for the student to just reach out to us, to reach out to their guidance counselor so that we can coordinate a time to meet. Um, how, do, how do they reach us if they have a question or concern? The, the best way is really through Gmail system or through Schoology message. Those are both really good ways for students to get in touch with us. Students can also stop by our office in person. Um, depending on the circumstances, we may be able to meet with the student right there in the moment, um, or we might need to coordinate another time that works best for both of us. And of course, if there is a crisis or emergency, we make the time to meet with them right then and there. So, um, so it's uh, my pleasure to hand it on to my colleague, uh, Ari Kenyon. Hi everyone, um, it is great to be here tonight. I am Ari Kenyon. Um, I'm going into my fourth year at Newton South. Um, I'm very lucky that I get to work with um, two house teams. I'm a um, guidance counselor in both Cutler and Goodwin House. Um, students will come to me often and when they're feeling behind or confused and they're like, Ms. Kenyon, what, what can I do? How can I get connected with my teacher to get some support? Um, and so what we encourage students to do is to meet with their teacher directly. Um, and before that meeting, you know, do, do some reflecting, jot down notes of what they're feeling confused about um, or what they have questions on. So they feel a little more empowered when they're going to meet with their teacher. Um, and of course, sometimes it can be a little challenging to um, have that conversation with the teacher, especially as a ninth grader, if you haven't done something like this before. Um, so all of us counselors are happy to help facilitate that conversation um, by you know, giving that teacher a heads up that the student is going to reach out. Um, in, and in that way, we wanna help the students uh, you know, direct the process, take ownership over it, 
because in the future, we really want them to feel empowered to do this independently when they're looking for help. Um, in addition to meeting with their teachers individually, I also encourage students um, to utilize other academic resources such as wind blocks, um, which are offered at various times throughout the week. And that's a great time to check in with teachers. Um, we also have um, academic resource centers such as the Science or Math Center, um, which is another great way to get some extra support as well. Um, so this is all to say there are lots of resources um, and supports at South and all of your children's counselors are ready to help them um, navigate that time when they're starting to feel behind or confused. Um, it is my pleasure to hand it over to Mr. Mayet. Thank you, Ari. Good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you for joining us uh, for this get together tonight. Um, my name is Charlie Mayette. I'm the Goodman House Dean. I have been the Dean of Goodman Houses going into my 18th year. I've been at Newton's Health for a long, long time and was a proud member of the science department. Uh, I'd like to uh, acknowledge that Dan Rubin and Ari Kenyon also, as they've told you, are also counselors in Goodwin. Uh, as well as the other houses they have, but I would like to introduce you tonight uh, and, and, and appreciate that they're here tonight, uh, Cara Vealy, Dave Kershaw, and Sarah Stiles. So I'll turn it over to uh, Cara and she'll introduce herself and go from there. Thank you. Right. Hi, everyone. My name is Cara Vealy. I am a counselor in Goodwin House. I've been here at South for 16 years. And um, I love meeting the new freshmen and um, seeing them all sort of nervous and excited and um, watch, watch them and help them as they find their place um, at Newton South. So um, let's see, for questions, um, I think I'm gonna tag team onto a couple things that other counselors have talked about. Um, you heard about wind blocks. So what are wind blocks? It's what I need blocks. Um, it means that every Monday in homeroom or advisory, um, the kids get to um, go on to something called MyFlex Learning and pick their wind blocks for the week. So let's say um, they're having a hard time figuring out how to do an equation in math. They can sign up for their math teacher's wind block one day. Or let's say they have a history test coming up. They can sign up for their world history teacher's wind block. So that happens every Monday in their advisory um, and it's a great place to get help, but it's not just academic. There are other things too. Like I have kids who sign up to play basketball and they just need to get that energy out and that's really important for them. Um, so, you know, there are different options every week, but that's um, one way that kids can get um, extra help. And that's just some detail for you about how your kids can sign up for those wind blocks. Um, and then uh, Mr. Rubin mentioned um, transfer students and New to South. Um, another hat I wear is I'm the um, advisor to the New to South Club, which is all the transfer students. So the kids who are coming from um, different states, different countries, sometimes coming from Newton, coming from private schools, um, but they just haven't been in the public school system before um, and they don't know a lot of kids. So we have two awesome student leaders to our New to South Club this year. Um, and we've got a, a senior and a sophomore, Luisa and Salila, and they are just welcoming new students with open arms. We have our first meeting on win three block um, on Friday the 16th. So not tomorrow, but the following um, Friday. So I am now gonna turn it over to uh, Dave Kershaw. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Uh, it's great to have you all here. It's been, um, Great to have all of your students and energy in the building. I'm sure you've heard some excitement, some nervousness, um, possibly some anxiety this week, but I hope uh, that that has been outweighed by what you've seen in smiles and hopefully heard in, in regards to optimism. So we have definitely um, gotten that vibe here, which is wonderful. So this is a great way to kick it off too. Um, I have been here 16 years and it has um, it has gone quickly. It's been my pleasure to have been in multiple houses, but I've been in Goodwin for most. So um, all of our colleagues are, are amazing. We, have, we work together really well. So um, again, welcome. One of the things that comes up often, and you may have heard a little bit about this from a few of my colleagues is, uh, you know, just worries about how a class is going, especially, you know, not in these first few days, but after the first few weeks or after things have sort of leveled off a little bit and those initial concerns may have grown. 
um, one of the most important way, things you can do. And uh, again, I don't want to repeat too, too much, but it's basically not to be um, someone who's drifting in and out with the bell. We say we use that term a lot. Um, you don't want to be someone who's, you know, not really a known entity in the class. You want to be, doesn't mean you have to have, you know, long conversations with your teacher be at the beginning and the end of every class. But if the comfort level is there, just, you know, making your concerns known, circling something in your math class, you know, a couple of problems that you missed that, you know, you, you were confused about. And then, and then, you know, checking in and asking your teacher what those, you know, if they can explain them in a different way, et cetera. Um, so that's really an important way to connect um, using email is great, but obviously, you know, face-to-face -face is really important. They are gonna in turn loop us in as well. Uh, we do a really good job of collaborating here at South and um, that's something we all pride ourselves upon. So they will, um, if there's concerns on the teacher's end, you need to know that, you know, it's not, we're not relying solely on on students reaching out to teachers. Um, it, 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 it's a full circle um, situation. So basically teachers will reach out. We have a lot of different modes and methods for them to contact us um, and, and alert us if there's concerns and also if there's really good stuff going on too so um that's a really you know just communicate communicating is really important so if you guys could also reinforce that at home that would be wonderful we know it takes time and encouragement especially as you're starting something new in a big building we don't expect everybody to be um you know an amazing self-advocate right out of the gate but uh, we certainly it's something that we want to cultivate and grow here so again welcome um, please reach out and say hello anytime I'm going to pass it off to my colleague, two doors down in Goodwin, Sarah Style. Hi, everyone. Good evening. It's great to be here with you all. Um, it's my 10th year at Newton South. Um, I've been in Goodwin and lucky to be with that team and um, the whole counseling department team. So one of the questions that I think is sometimes on ninth graders minds and students that are new to South is, you know, what do I do if I'm worried about my own emotional wellness or if I'm worried about a friend's mental health, you know, what can I do in the school? And so I always encourage them to reach out to their counselor, but I also mention that they can reach out to really any trusted adult, um, whether it's a teacher that they feel close to um, or they just clicked with right away that they're comfortable with or a, a dean, one of our two amazing nurses. Um, you know, there are a lot of people that they may have connected with. And so as long as they you know, know that they can go to any trusted adult in the building, um, I also let them know that we are really accustomed to fielding these questions from students, whether they're worried about themselves, they're just not feeling great emotionally, um, or if they are worried about a friend you know, who maybe isn't acting like themselves. And so I just let them know that we kind of know the steps that we need to take and we take those steps to make sure that students have access to the support they need. Um, and then to build off of what Nicole Motley was talking about earlier, some of the resources that we do have at South um, are based in the Counseling Center. And so like Nicole said, you'll be hearing more about some of those opportunities um, later on. Um, but you know, like I said, counselors are always open and ready to field any concerns related to um, a student's emotional wellness or if they have a concern about a friend. So um, that's how I usually answer that question if it comes up. And um, please, like Mr. Kershaw said, you know, feel free to reach out any questions, concerns, and hope it's a great year for you all. Uh, so this is actually a moment during tonight's program when I'm going to jump back in and just share that a lot of the information that is coming at you tonight um, is detailed specific and um, you know now I'm going to try to share some information that will just prompt us to take a step back and, and uh, think about the big picture. Um, so briefly I'll just share some comments about developmentally um, where are students as they enter high school, whether it's as ninth graders or as transfer students coming from another um, school experience? So uh, first of all, it's just always an exciting time of year to have um, people, students, energy back in the building. For those of us that spend some time in the building during the summer, um, you know, school during the summertime, it's, it's quiet, it's sleepy. Um, and it's, it's great in terms of productivity for adults in some ways, but it's just missing that energy that students bring to the building. And, um, you know, that sort of nervous, excited energy is always most pronounced in our newest students. Um, as parents, you know, I expect that you may be feeling a range of emotions, um, you know, joy and pride and maybe some worry. Um, you know, if this is your first child entering high school, uh, you may be sort of wondering how in the heck you have a high school student. 
I know um, my, my oldest is entering eighth grade this year, and I can't even imagine that one year from now, I'm going to be calling myself the parent of a high schooler. Um, but while your students have an extraordinary number of opportunities ahead of them, you know, in many ways, the most important uh, milestones that your, your students will achieve during their high school years might have nothing to do with their grades or their classes or where they end up following high school. Um, in many ways, the most valuable experiences are, are not about any kind of measurable outcome at all, uh, but rather they're the experiences that can serve as the foundation for your students' lives moving forward. Uh, social emotional skills like problem solving, learning how to be persistent in pursuit of a goal, resilience, um, skills that develop the confidence that bumps in the road are an expected part of life, and that how we respond to adverse events is actually far more important than whether or not we face adversity. Um, encountering and engaging with new ideas that challenge our assumptions or our prior knowledge, it, it can help us to deepen our understanding of the world. And in turn, it allows us to take a more objective look at ourselves um, in the classroom with peers. It's important that your students don't fear things that are unfamiliar, uh, but rather that they lean into those things. So sometimes the ideas that we can encounter, they, they might feel radically different than anything that we know or what feels familiar. Um, they might challenge our values, our beliefs. Um, and in, in a lot of ways, you know, engaging with those ideas and reshaping our own values really is the very essence of adolescence. Um, it's about sort of separation from um, family systems, from the known, um, you know, finding uh, the sense of validation in peer groups. And um, it is a normal and healthy part of your kids' development for them to, at times, you know, lean away from their family and into their friends and their peer groups. Um, and that can you know, cause some um, uncomfortable or ambivalent feelings as adults, um, but it really is normal and healthy for our kids. Um, you know, this is supposed to be a time of shaky footing. Um, within the bubble that is Newton and Newton South, kids are often hearing messages that you know, they need to strive for perfection and that in some ways, even small setbacks can um, sprout into colossal failure or something to fear. And it's really important for us to remember that you know, in life, setbacks are a part of the process and a journey without setbacks may not be sufficient preparation for the realities of life, both during these high school years and beyond. Um, so yes, results matter, but process and authentic engagement really often matter far more. Um, South will provide your children with these opportunities for growth. Um, and we're here to partner with you and to provide some guardrails, um, but also a, a wide berth for experience as your children journey through South and into young adulthood. Um, the counseling staff is, as you've heard from many of them tonight, incredibly experienced, talented. Um, you know, many of them have experience working at the middle school level, even in addition to their high school work. Um, and a deep, deep developmental knowledge of young people. Um, we serve as academic advisors, as personal counselors, um, as consultants to families, as facilitators of communication. And through all of that, um, we strive to build a supportive relationship and partnership with you and with your children. Um, we want to work with you to move your children towards independence and self-advocacy. Those are some things I, I think uh, Ms. Kenyon spoke about. Um, we encourage you to uh, work with your children sort of in a, in a coaching role um, to help them to find their voice um, when they have a question or if they need to approach us or approach a teacher. Um, it's oftentimes really helpful if you will you know, coach them to um, advocate for themselves, to reach out, and then maybe circle in with an email after the fact to see how things went. Um, if your child is reluctant for that, you know, by all means, we are always receptive to hearing from you by email, a quick phone call. Um, but please, um, you know, it's really, it's, it's a, a critical moment in your children's lives for them to develop some agency and to see themselves as, um, you know, active um, agents in leading to change in their own lives. Um, as you hear from us in the counseling department over the, the course of these next few years, one of the ongoing themes we'll talk about will be balance and just the idea that, that more does not always mean better um, and that sometimes trying to go the farthest, the fastest has its limitations, including at times burnout. 
Um, so we are here to work with you, work with your children, um, try to strive towards some moderation um, in, in all of their pursuits and to seek that balance. Um, I also just before wrapping up want to share um, a couple of other additional support personnel who work with the counseling department. Um, Katani Sumner, our METCO counselor, supports all of our Boston resident students. Um, and her office space in the Goodwin Commons is uh, a home not only to uh, many of our Boston students, but uh, all students are welcome there. And it's a great uh, place where students representing um, different racial groups, ethnic groups, uh, you know, are mixing together and enjoying their South experience um, in a melting pot. Um, I also want to make note of Brian Dulesky, who's uh, our prevention and intervention um, social worker. Um, Brian uh, is there if you have questions related to, um, you know, substance use, any concerns, he's a great resource, um, works with many students, not just for students who um, may be having difficulty um, with substance, but um, he's a social worker who's available for all students across the building. Uh, Kathy Sabet, our College and Career Center counselor, is a tremendous resource. She oftentimes will get more involved in students' lives during their 11th and 12th grade years as they're planning for life beyond high school. Um, and just some other names of clinicians that you might hear over time. Um, Stacy Bishop and Sarah Gentile are social workers, uh, school adjustment counselors in our COMPASS program. Um, Asher Barron is one of our clinicians who works with our STEP program. Um, Kathleen Salage works with students in our academic support program and also in our counseling center. Um, Steve Feinberg and Josh Smith are clinicians involved with the Southside program. Um, and Tracy Murphy, Andrew Aspel, and Aaron Valanti are school psychologists who work in our building. So those are all names that you might hear um, from time to time. Um, and they are some great clinical resources and experts. Um, but we really, we look forward to working with you and your children and wish you um, the best of luck as you are getting started here as South parents or continuing um, with us here at South if you have older children in the school. Um, at this point, I'm gonna hand it back over to the deans and uh, very much look forward to uh, working with you over these next few years. Thank you so much, Dan. So um, uh, with that being said, we're now going to go into the second part of the night, which is really uh, some whole school info. So um, the guidance counselors, thank you so much. You're more than welcome to stay if you want to hear it, but you've sat in the assemblies with us. So uh, I just want to say thank you all for coming. And uh, as we always say, if you have any questions for your guidance counselor, please do not hesitate to reach out to them. You can call them, you can email them. Um, but with that, thank you, guidance counselors. And so we okay. um, so as they go, um, what I will say, so uh, Mr. Mayette, the Dean of Goodwin House is gonna kick us off with some of these slides. Uh, what we decided to do this year is um, we did each of our ho uh, house grade assemblies by house. And so for the first time, uh, as far as I know, at least in my 11 years, uh, we actually got to meet with just the ninth graders in our house, as opposed to we normally have done a great assembly with all 500 ninth graders. Um, and that, as you can imagine, it's just a lot of students in a space. And so we broke out by house. And uh, what we're going to show you, Jason is going to share his screen, um, is the actual presentation that we gave to our ninth graders um, on Tuesday morning, the first day of school. So hopefully there will be some consistency. Um, and there's a lot of information, especially with our new attendance policy. And we also recognize that Zoom isn't necessarily the best place to have a conversation with all of the questions. Back to school night is next Thursday night and it is in person and the deans are going to be in the student center, also known as the cafeteria. Uh, so if you have any questions that you really want to ask us, A, feel free to give us a call um, at South and we can gladly answer any questions. Or if you want to chat with us in person, we will be in the cafeteria answering all the attendance questions. So with that being said, I am going to hand it over to you, Mr. Mayette, Dean of Goodman House. Thank you, Mr. Banks. Uh, I, I wanted to add that this is the first time that we had done a presentation like this on opening day 
by individual house. And I found it to be very uh, meaningful, productive, and, and, and uh, very close where the small groups. And um, I enjoyed doing it. I recommend uh, that we do it again for next year. So you're about to see the, uh, and here, hopefully, and you can capture some of the things as, as we met with your student um, on that opening day. So uh, Mr. Williams, next slide, please. Uh, we talked a little bit about COVID uh, precautions. Um, uh, mask, we're a mask-friendly environment. I, I hear uh, the voice of uh, Ms. Blocker there. If you have a question, if you have questions about COVID regulations, feel free, free to speak with us or the nurses. Uh, wash your hands often, do the daily health check. And if you're not feeling uh, well, if you're not feeling well, tell your parent guardian or health care provider. Do a check in the morning like uh, you normally would. The mask friendly really refers to the fact that if somebody wants to wear a mask, they may, and we respect that. Uh, students, uh, staff, we all respect that person wearing uh, anybody who wears a mask uh, and such. But So next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, we reviewed the house system, your house team, the idea, and we really are a team. And when you come into the school next Thursday night, you'll see that each house office is really a suite, uh, which has the administrative assistant house secretary right there to welcome you. They're, they're the first person you see available by phone, available by email. Uh, the dean's office is there. The guidance counselors, as they had pointed out, that some of them are housed uh, in a particular house, even when they are split uh, or divided across uh, other houses. The advisory teacher is there. That is somebody that would uh, be there with your child for four, uh, for four years, as will the guidance counselor, as will the dean, as will the house secretary. So the idea is that these folks are part of your child's uh, uh, and students' uh, experience in Newton South for the next four years, uh, in addition to all the and, uh, rich academic and extracurricular activities and things and friendships and fun times that they're going to have. We also have four campus aides. They're all veterans. They're great with, uh, with kids. And um, they are uh, moving around the school all day long. They're helping to uh, move students from one place to another. Right now, they do a wonderful job, which I always do, but that's helping you student uh, get to their class and find where they're going. And you, your students are doing a pretty good job of that. Uh, recently, I've, uh, you know, only a few minutes after the, 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 the bell for class to begin, do we see uh, just a few students in the hallway. So the campus aides, the deans, uh, uh, many of the advisory teachers are out there trying to help your students get, get to class uh, and find their class. Next slide. Uh, building entry. Uh, in the building entry, there, there are uh, many, many doors to Newton South. And some of you who may know the school well can say, well, you can get into this door or that door. But uh, of those many doors, uh, these are the ones that are open uh, and you make an entrance into the school in the morning. Uh, and usually you might be greeted by a dean and or campus aide, the principal. There are many different adults. Um, and the doors that are open at that time are the main office that's coming right in by the principal's office and uh, right off of uh, Brandeis Road and that, that drive up. Both breezeway doors, this breezeway is where the buses drop off. The breezeway door is an outdoor breezeway that's between Goodwin House and the Field House. And um, if your child needs to go towards Cutler, they could go into the, the gym uh, breezeway door if they're going towards Goodwin. They can go in uh, at the Goodwin side. And of course, every, uh, every door and every hallway leads to another hallway at, at Newton South. So they can come in any door they wish. The Wheeler door, as you come in at Wheeler Goldrick, uh, drive in, that's another drive up. That's on uh, the side of the school uh, when you first approach down uh, Brandeis Road uh, with the fields, uh, you know, football uh, and athletic stadium towards the back that door and the back of Cutler House, which is, is normally limited to, for drop-offs for, for uh, some vans and, and, and buses and such like that. Uh, all other doors are locked. Students should only be entering through these doors. At 9.15, all doors are locked. 
um, even the uh, for uh, well the three I just mentioned, uh, and students are able to access those doors with the code. The idea being that it's it uh, they're they're able to move from one place to another, and this will not prevent them from getting uh, in, into the building and 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 being late. Uh, but it, it's not necessarily meant just to uh, keep the door as a, a hardened barrier for getting in. All right, next slide, please. Uh, lockers and essential school supplies. If, uh, if uh, needing a locker, please contact your advisory teacher and or the uh, house secretary. If you don't have a Chromebook, stop by IT. Uh, that's uh, on the first floor off by the student center. Uh, you know, I've received several um, emails from parents just checking in about um, uh, when if their child had not uh, had not received a, a Chromebook. So uh, you know, please, that should that is, seems to be going okay. And each day, your child should bring something to write with, something to write on, a charged Chromebook, a Chromebook charger. Probably the thing, the number one thing that goes missing throughout the day with people leave behind or leave plugged in or leave at home or they have a Chromebook that's not <laughs> charged. Something to drink, uh, uh, as such as a, wa a water bottle. There are several water bottle filling stations a, uh, around the school, and there are uh, quite a few uh, water fountains. A mask, if you choose, and other supplies your teachers have requested. Next slide. Okay, how am I doing, Mr. Banks? I'm still on. I think this one's me, Mr. Maya. Okay, Dr. Good Martin, job. take it away. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Megan Martin, the Dean of Wheeler House, and I'm here to talk about the next few slides. Um, what you're looking at now is on the right, a picture of the schedule for Monday and Tuesday on your student's schedule. Um, and circled in that purple um, is advisory. Advisory is a 20 minute period of time on Mondays uh, where your student would, will meet with his, her, or their advisor. The, uh, the advisor will be with your student for uh, four years. It's not necessarily a teacher that the student will have in other disciplines, but it's a place in the um, time and space in the building where kids will get to um, meet with other students and get to know another trusted adult in the building. It's really important that your student goes, even though it is only a 20 minute once a week uh, period of time. Um, not only is it a time to meet with other people, but it's a time in the week where your student will use the MyFlex learning um, computer system through which a he, she, or they will register and sign up for the win blocks, the three win blocks um, that take place later in the week. Um, your student will be trained on how to use the MyFlex Learning. And in a few slides, we'll talk more in depth about what the win block is. But in order to sign up for what your student wishes to do during the win block on Tuesday, um, uh, sorry, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, they need to go to their advisory on Monday. The lion block, which is that um, yellowish orangey period at the end of the day, that is an optional period of time at the end of the day on Tuesday during which your students could meet with um, uh, clubs or meet with a teacher to get some extra help, uh, connect with the teacher and just hang out in a room. Um, again, that is optional. Advisory and win blocks are not optional. Um, and then there are, you see on that final bullet, it says orange and blue week. So our colors are orange and blue. Every other week, um, different clubs and teams will meet. So if your student is interested in a particular extracurricular club, that club might meet during orange week, so they might meet every other um, lion block. Uh, I did see a question in the chat at one point about when those clubs will meet. A long list of clubs availability and times in place of their meetings will be taking, will be coming out shortly. Um, Mr. Williams, if you could change, that'd be great. So the what I need, that's the win block I was just talking about. So win stands for what I need. And it really came for during came from conversations with students during the pandemic when we had a particular schedule. 
often we ask students, well, what did you like about this temporary schedule? And a lot of students said, well, one thing I did enjoy was that there was time and space within the footprint of my actual school day where I could get some of the stuff I needed to work on done. Um, so in an effort to not get rid of some of the good things while we were creating a new schedule, we created WIN. So three times a week on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays for 50 minutes, your student will have the opportunity to sign up to meet with a teacher or a trusted adult in the school to work on what they need, what I need. It is mandatory. It is time on learning. So while your student might come home and say, oh, I had some free time during win, that is not entirely an accurate way of representing it. They have to go to that particular class that win block that they sign up for through their advisory. Some students use those times for academic support. They might say, you know, I really need to have some help on my English paper because that's coming up. So I'm going to sign up for my teacher's win block on Wednesday. Another student might say, all right, I'm going to do that Wednesday, but on Thursday, I'd like to have a more uh, a win block that focuses more on my well-being, and I'm going to do something that's a little bit more of a downtime. And then Friday, maybe I want to have a general sort of study time with a teacher that might take, uh, teach a discipline I'm interested in. But the biggest thing that we would really appreciate you reiterating with your student is to remind him or them that this is not an optional time. They must go to win and attendance is taken and it goes towards their attendance um, standard towards the end of the term and towards the end of the year. If your student has any questions, please, please let them know that they are more than welcome to come and touch base with any one of their deans or guidance counselors or advisors to um, go over any of that. Thanks, Jason. Okay, so the next series of slides is going to be um, about the attendance policy that Newton South High School and Newton North High School uh, has adopted for the 2022-2023 school year. Um, so this might be new to some of you who might have um, older students in the school uh, or students who have graduated. Don't hesitate to ask any questions to the deans or the guidance counselors, but you're, just so you know, your students have had a detailed presentation on this, their first day of school. Next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, so what is the attendance standard for a term? So ultimately, a good way of thinking of this is in every class your student takes, they'll earn a grade, and they'll also have a column that states whether or not he, she, or they will meet the attendance standard for that class. They will get a Y for yes or an N for no as to whether or not the attendance standard for each class has been met. So a student will get a yes um, if he, she, or they has five or fewer total absences and two or fewer unexcused absences. The student will receive a no, an N in the attendance standard if he, she, or they has six or more total absences in a term or three or more unexcused absences in a term. Next slide, please. So is this still me? Yes, right? Okay, good. <laughs> I don't want to steal anybody else's thunder. Um, what is the attendance standard for the year continued? So for a full year course, um, so for instance, English is a full year course. It starts um, the first day of school and it goes through the spring. Um, your student will earn a yes in the course if they earned a yes in three of the four or four of the four terms. So they would get their end of the year grade, their letter grade, and they would get a Y for the end of the year. They would get an N if they earned a no for all four terms. If they didn't ever meet the attendance standard for any one term, they of course can't get the year end credit for getting the full attendance standard met. For a semester course, so for instance, a course that began earlier this week and ends around January, only half of a year, they would earn a yes if they earned yeses for term one and for term two. They would earn a no or an N if they earned a no for term one and term two. A quarter course, so for instance, one that only goes between now and November, whatever they earned for that first term would be the standard requirement met or not meant for that entire course. Okay. Um, in terms of attendance and credit, I believe this is Dr. Banks. Dr. Banks, can you see it? You're all set. 
Yes, sorry about that. Um, so in terms of attendance and credit, so on the report card, there will be a yes or a no for each term. But on the transcript, we will also have an attendance standards column. And whether or not you've met the attendance standard for the year will be considered based on several things. So you might have noticed that, okay, if I get three or four yeses, um, that's a yes, but what about the no side? So a no for four terms equals no credit. But what if you have two no's or one or three no's? That is a conversation that will be had between the dean, the department chair, teacher, and you, right? So you will be involved in all of these conversations. No no's will come as a surprise, right? So for full year courses, if you receive two or more no's, um, we will talk about reduced credit. For semester courses, students who don't meet the standard for one term may receive reduced credit, and clearly if it's for both terms, it's a no uh, for meeting the attendance standard. And for quarter courses, because they only meet for one quarter, if that doesn't work, uh, sorry, if they meet, if they get a no, then that means that they will receive an, uh, no credit. We will talk about credit and you will always be part of the conversation uh, when it comes to reducing the credit. Keep in mind, this is our first year doing this attendance policy. So we're gonna work with the department chairs and making up credit might mean something like meeting with your teacher after school doing, um, or maybe even looking into summer courses to make up the loss of credit along the way. Mr. Williams, next slide. And as for tardy, so that's the absent piece, but what about the tardiness piece? So we have 65 or 75 minute classes. So we have said to teachers that if a student is 25 minutes late or late or more, um, they will receive an absent for the class. The teacher may, may give an absence for the class. Otherwise they will mark them tardy, right? It's up to the teacher. The teacher will use their judgment. And we said to the ninth graders and the new to South students that they cannot argue with the teacher. It's always a conversation. Come talk to the deans, right? And we'll talk about, okay, why were you late? Of course, if they were doing a school sponsored activity, if they were with one of the deans, if they were with a guidance counselor, um, if they were you know, doing testing, um, or they had to leave early for sports, right? Those will be marked as excuse. But if they're just walking into class with a Starbucks 25 minutes late, the teacher has the right to mark them absent. Mr. Williams? I believe I'm handing this off to- Yes, me, Delacandro, uh, yes. Um, so your role as the parent or guardian, what you should do, um, you should contact the house office by 11 a.m. the day of any absence, tardiness, or dismissal. That's the first thing that you do is you reach out to the house office. You let them know um, about an absence, tard tardiness, or a dismissal. If there is a single lock to be excused midday, we ask that the note from a medical or legal provider um, you know, be given to us to excuse the absence. Um, let's see. And if you don't meet the standards, there will be, as Mr. Banks mentioned, there will be lots, or Dr. Banks, sorry, there will be lots of communication with the families. Um, some of the pieces that we're going to try to use to help students meet those standards, if there's any issues that, that, that come up, um, could be teacher detentions, uh, dean's wins, which is um, you know, what you need, the student, what, what they need, um, a lunch detention and possible loss of credit. Those Dean wins are in place of uh, regular wind blocks. Next slide, please. I think I'm handing this off to Charlie. Charlie, I think this is you. I've got it, Ted, thank you very much. Uh, Dean Rowe, as um, we collaborate mm -hmm. with the, your teachers and counselors to support you. Our interventions may include assigning further wind blocks, what you need, assigning a lunch detention, holding a parent guardian meeting to plan out a series of uh, interventions and supports and limiting privileges. Uh, such as access to air, certain areas of the building. We will, we will always communicate all outcomes to teachers. Next slide, please, Mr. Williams. 
limited open campus, canceled class and lunch. You should have something in your schedule for all blocks. If you do not, see your counselor. If your teacher is absent, their name will be on the list in school, on Schoology. Canceled classes will meet in the lecture hall where attendance will be taken. Ninth graders are not allowed to leave campus. You may go outside for lunch on our campus. Next slide. Student spaces that are uh, available, uh, Goldrick Commons, Goodwin Commons, Wheeler Commons, the library, and the student center, uh, the cafeteria. I'll jump in here, Mr. Mayette. So as, as he was saying, um, <clears throat> we are asking students to please not eat in the hallways. You might've heard from some of your ninth graders. Uh, I know the deans talked about it, or at least I talked about it in the Goldrick House meeting, um, that we've been having some issues with some furry friends in the building, uh, little mice. So uh, we are asking, and it's, it's really because students will eat in the hallway and then just leave their trash in the hallway in years past. It's a fresh year, brand new start. The students have been awesome so far this week in terms of not eating in the hallways. And so we're just asking that they clean up after themselves. Where they can eat are in those student spaces minus the library uh, that Mr. Mayette had said previously. Uh, so we also let them know that they also just can't hang out in the hallway. They should always be in a place that's supervised by a um, staff member. So don't eat in the hallways, don't hang out in the hallways, and try not to sit on the floor because sometimes when they do, they just like stick their feet out. So they've been great. The students have been awesome in working with us uh, so far. <clears throat> Next slide, Mr. Williams. And so speaking of food, yes, I will hand that off to Mr. Delicandro. who is still on mute. I hit that. Okay, sorry about that, I'm a little rusty. Um, speaking of food, breakfast and lunch are free again this year. All students may receive one free meals must be keyed in at the register using the student ID number. Um, did you notice the asterisk? If you did, next slide, please. Um, with free, there are specifics that students have to sort of adhere to. Um, for breakfast, they get a fruit, a grain, and a milk. Um, for lunch, it's a little bit more um, complicated, or we get one fruit or a vegetable and two of the following, a meat option, a non-meat option, uh, for example, that could be a yogurt, cheese, or beans, a milk, and then a grain. Um, students must meet the criteria above for their meals for it to be for it to be considered free. Um, this is a little disappointing, but all a la carte items like potato chips or cookies or other bars are not included. Students can pay for them. Uh, if they choose to, to purchase something like that. But chips and, and, and cookies and stuff like that are not included in the free lunch. Next slide, please. And I'm not sure. So the, the big shot of thing about this, the upshot is, this is gonna take some getting used to this year, um, particularly for some of our uh, upper class people who um, are not quite used to this policy. So please encourage your students to be respectful and kind um, to our colleagues in the um, cafeteria who are doing their best to implement this new policy. And um, please tell your student that if they have any questions uh, about this, that we are happy to talk to them about this. And the big thing is to not get into an argument in the cafeteria, but rather speak with us uh, in private. Thank you, Jason. Um, in terms of the next slide um, about ordering food. So some students might say, well, I'd like to order from a, a different restaurant like Uber Eats or Grubhub or something like that. It is not against the rules to do so, but it is not encouraged to do so for a number of reasons. If a student decides to order um, a meal from an outside location, um, the delivery person is not allowed into the building. So your student wouldn't be allowed to meet them within the building. Also, as we just spoke about, we have a new attendance policy. So if through no fault of your students, um, their food is 
delivered later than they expected and they leave a class or arrive late to a class because they chose to wait for their food to be delivered, they could very well be marked tardy or absent from the class that they are missing to get the food from an outside location. And some teachers might not allow them to eat in the class because they're not allowed to eat in classes. So they might find that frustrating. Um, so if your student says, well, I missed a class because I was ordering and the order came late, we would encourage you to have a conversation about planning that out ahead of time because that's not something that um, we would encourage. Cell phones, uh, if your parent, uh, we, we told the children, if parent or guardian need to contact you, they should go through the house office. Otherwise, you should assume it can wait till after class. Uh, I know in this instant uh, social media and instant messaging and cell phone, uh, uh, a time that we are living in, um, your child, student, it, some of them, need to or feel they need to contact you. And I understand they feel comfort in that, but it, it is challenging the learning or the activity or the participation and the access that, that could go, be going on. So we, we just ask you to think about, right, when you're contacting your child. And if it's something that you urgent that you need to get them a message to, please contact the house office, the dean, uh, counselor and or um, admin assistant will, will do their best to work with you to get that information or actually have your child, uh, if it's that critical or, or time sensitive uh, to, to be able to get that message. May only use the phone during class time when the, with teacher permission. So phone should not be out unless the teacher has asked them to take them out and, and most likely to use them for some uh, sort of uh, educational activity or learning activity. Some of your teachers may ask you to use a cell phone parking lot. This is part of our school culture. A large number of teachers will ask them to park the phone uh, somewhere uh, at the front of the room. Uh, it, sometimes there's a layout of, of, of some uh, of, of boxes or there could be the, uh, uh, shoe, the shoe trees and such like that. If your teacher takes your phone because you've been on it in class, know that we'll come to us and we will work it out. So if a teacher does remove, uh, you ask for your child's phone because they've uh, had it out when they should not have, it, it, you, it ends up with us the phone and then we will work out with your, uh, with your student how that's going to uh, uh, work out. Um, next slide I think is uh, Ted, Mr. Mr. Del Condo. Yes, sir. Okay, um, with, with cell phones, a recent phenomenon has been um, taking pictures or recordings of others. So an important note from our rights and responsibilities handbooks for students, taking a picture and or creating a video or audio recording of another person in school or at a school sponsored event without obtaining the consent of that person whose image or voice was recorded will result in disciplinary action from the school. So next slide, please. Now we talk about emotional wellness. Um, I remember one of the guidance counselors mentioned that some kids may be excited, some kids may be anxious and nervous, and that's okay. Those are all normal um, emotions to feel when they're first starting high school. So we tell the students, um, you know, look out for each other, look out for your friends. And if you, if you are worried, get help from a trusted adult. Okay, uh, and that's an important piece. Hopefully they have a trusted adult. They can always come to their dean or see their guidance counselors if they're worried about you know, themselves or they're worried about another uh, a friend. And as I just mentioned, students are encouraged to um, visit their guidance counselors um, with any issues and deans as well. As we certainly don't wanna be looked at as, as simply disciplinarians. I think deans, I know in my 20 years here, the deans have always been great uh, working with the students and helping them through um, any issues that pop up. Next slide, please. All right, so I will take this one. Um, <clears throat> I am the dean that oversees class office. Uh, I work with uh, Kelly Fitzgerald and PJ Kern, who are two of our teachers and also class advisors. They oversee sort of all of class office with me. So just wanted you to know that elections are coming for the ninth graders. If your ninth grader is interested or is even thinking about or poses a question of, you know, mom, dad, uncle, aunt, grandpa, grandma, 
whoever, um, if they're talking about class office and they're interested, please, please, please encourage them to come see me uh, and I can talk them through the process. Um, so we did I, we did talk with all of our ninth graders about who all of the class advisors are. Uh, and then on the next, oh, and there's also South Senate. So class office is really about um, school spirit. South Senate really helps uh, the principal and the faculty council sort of think about policy around the school. How can we make life a little easier for students at Newton South? And then on the next slide um, is a timeline of when the elections are going to happen. Uh, we will actually be sharing this in advisory on Monday with the ninth graders. So we gave them, we purposely hold off for about a month before we start the process. So they get a chance to get to know the school, get to know each other. Uh, and then they have to do two mandatory meetings that I run along with um, PJ and Kelly. Uh, and then they go through the process and it's great every year. So if your child has an inkling of thinking about class office please 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 encourage them to come see me and i'll, I'll talk them into it i'm up so we we have four school values um they're pretty straightforward but we, we we start with choose kindness we basically i know i mentioned to the to the freshmen and, and the other classes i met met with today that i simply said please just choose kindness, be, be kind to everybody that you meet and you're speaking to and you bump into, it goes a long way when you just be kind. Um, listen first is, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory, but that's something when you're talking, you're in discussion with the class or you're talking to a dean or a teacher or somebody else, it's always best to listen first and then uh, proceed with the conversation. Showing respect. Uh, again, a, a pretty self-explanatory, but if you show respect, you're going to get respect, and I think that goes a long way in our in our current climate. If we just respect each other, um, I think that'll help uh, make a better school community for all of us. And and this is a big one too. Um, I know take responsibility. Um, when you make a mistake, um, owning it is is a big part of of um, you know correcting the mistake and just learning from it. And, and we all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. But when you take that responsibility and you own it, things will get better from there. Next slide. So in conclusion, before we hand it over to um, Josepha Blocker, um, just in a nutshell, the biggest things we would say for you to tell your ninth grade student, please, or your new to South student would be find a person in the school. It could be a coach one of the nurses, or your dean, your counselor, or a trusted teacher, a campus aide, somebody uh, other than a peer who, when you're having times of success or struggle, you could go to, uh, that'd be really important, that matters. So throughout the year, ask your student, who's your person in the school? Who do you trust? Who can you go to? Uh, try new things and get involved. Um, don't feel like you can only be one kind of person at the school. Uh, it's really great to be multifaceted and there's lots of opportunities. Um, take care of yourself and your friends. If you are concerned about how you're feeling or you're concerned about what a friend might have said or they just don't seem to be themselves, um, going to talk to a guidance counselor or dean is not snitching or not um, being a bad friend. Quite the contrary, it's being an active, helpful citizen of the school and you might really be making an incredibly helpful connection for them to hook them up with somebody in the school who could reach out and be of support and um, see a trusted adult if you need any help. Um, we're here to help and um, as family members at home, please know that the administration and the faculty at the school loves partnering with you and wants to do so frequently. You never have to ask permission to reach out to us. Um, you don't have to ask your student if you could call the Dean or the guidance counselor. We like to hear from you and we'll be as truthful and honest and transparent as we're able to be. So welcome to Newton South and I'm now handing it over on behalf of the deans to Principal Blocker. Hi, thank you for all that information. So we, we recognize there was a lot of dense information. You may be fielding some questions from your ninth grader um, or new student as they are coming home to you following them receiving this information in school. Um, we, um, we are available, um, as the deans have said and the counselors have said for questions. So um, we would encourage um, folks who, who have remaining questions to reach out to their dean or counselor, um, and likewise to encourage their student to do the same. Um, and also just a uh, quick reminder, we said it at the beginning that um, 
uh, folks felt like um, via survey that doing this uh, this night online was um, the best plan for convenience for most people being able to access and then um, sort of by a you know, 75% majority, um, and we will be in person um, next week for back to school night, um, which we're very excited about to have you into the school building. And um, we, um, during that time, the deans will all be available in the student center. So if your um, ninth grader or new student happens to have a directed study or a free block for our older um, new students, um, or a class that you feel like you don't really um, need to gather as much information on, please stop by the Student Center. Um, we'll all be there and um, happy to answer questions um, or um, any any sort of uh, other troubleshooting that um, might need to happen. Um, we are again thrilled to welcome your children to Newton South. Um, we will be sending out um, the video of this presentation for those of you who would find it helpful. Um, and we hope you all have um, a great evening. Take care.